Alrighty, howdy, Buffalo Bart here, and welcome. Let's get this show started. All right, so where we last left off in our current adventure, we'll go ahead and hit the play mode. We have in an hour and a half's time, we have loaded up our pre-made map and set up a whole new character system where you can run around, jump, do your thing. You're unarmed, but wait, there's a musket over here. So you can grab a musket, it changes your view, and it puts you into a first person uh, view. So we've actually made the weapon actually shoot a projectile. It's got a pretty fair amount of drop. We might improve that a little bit. We want some drop to it, kind of give you a challenge. That way you're not sitting there with laser type accuracy with a, uh, a musket when you're trying to Oh, I don't know, come over here and shoot at the fools that are coming at you in a pirate ship, which hopefully we will try to get the uh, pirate ships working. You see, you can arc your shots in and, you know, that kind of stuff. But you're not going to sit here and shoot 15 miles. Your bullets only have a uh, short time to live, so they're not going to make it all the way to that island. But if you try to shoot at the pirate ships, yeah, you might get the, uh, the shot across. All right, so and yes, we got jump, and we'd like to also activate the crouch feature, so you can crouch, um, and do some other stuff. I want to do some cleanup on the main menu, which I think I'm going to start with that first. So what I've done during this last little break was I went ahead and added some files in, and what I've done is added some audio files. I've got some ambient sounds, which are taken from the um, starter content, which I did not load the entire starter content. I just copied this in and fixed the links to it. We had some gunshot sounds. We've got a pistol, a rifle, a shotgun, and a sniper. So I think those are going to be good enough to work with for now and some music which we'll hear very shortly and some images I've added in a background which you'll see here in just a second as well and let's go ahead and take a look at our main menu because as of right now it's a little on the plain side got our click sound and our images want to make sure I have my Technoax logo the music that I'm using comes from Technoax and if you're not familiar with uh, Technoax online um, yeah, it's definitely worth checking out his stuff. His music is outstanding. It's um, got a Creative Commons license and is royalty free. Love his stuff, man. Really good. And he's got a lot of music on his website. So do check it out. It's well worth looking into. I highly recommend it. So let's get into the main menu. As you can see, it looks a little on the plain side. I'm going to go ahead and hide these two boxes real quick because we don't need to see them and find server box let's hide that and we don't really need to see that right now so what I want to do is I want to change my background and what I'm going to change it over to is get your ass up there is the image that I brought in for the background and I think it looks pretty damn good. So let's try adding that into the brush. And we need to adjust the tint. I think it looks good. It's something I just picked up off of uh, Google Image Search. Um, you know, the black background, the buttons, probably not going to work on this one. So we could always move the exit button or fix that. I'm not going to worry about it just yet, but I think that looks a whole lot better. We also need to create another image since we're going to be using the sound from, or the music in the background from Technoax. I'm going to go ahead and come down to that image and select that from my image brush and we're going to 
put it in right there. So that looks good. We've got a nice looking menu now. It looks good. We've got all the click sounds already set up in there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit compile and save. Now to add the music to the background, what I want to do is I want to go to the map for main menu map, load it in, go to the blueprints folder and open my level blueprint. And that is kind of a necessary thing right there, destroy a session. Don't really want to explain it right now, but let's go ahead and add a sequence node. And from that sequence node, I'm just going to drag a pen down here, play sound at location. It don't matter the location because it's going to be everywhere. The sound that we're going to use is anti-hero. We're going to change the volume level to about 0.6 and compile and save. Next thing I want to do is throw your ass up here because that's where you belong. Is I want to look to see how long that wave file is. And yes, to import your music in, you really need to use the um, the wave uh, format. Mousing over it, I can see duration is 262.5. So we'll just do 263. So from here, I want to add a delay. and we're going to set the time at 265 and then we're going to have it loop back into itself so the music will continuously play over and over and over and over and never stop ever 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 so now if we hit play we have a pretty one now it's going to say go connect to steam dummy because we're in this viewport if we did it as a standalone then it would work normal so all of our other stuff still works. See, they actually have a background behind them. So that's good to go. Um, I like it. It feels more piratey now. All right, so we'll exit that and let's go back to our main map just because that's all we really need to do to spruce up the main menu was just to do that and Go to maps and demonstration. Let it load that back up again. Now, moving right along. We have all of our player starts in this one location. What I'm going to do is I will, for right now, delete all but one. And we can rename you to just player start. All right, so we just have the one player start for now. That's all we need. And you can go away. We don't need you. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called Pickups. And I'm going to move our rifle pickup into there. So right now we only have the one and in one location. I'm not worried about anything else for right now. But more will come and what I will do is I will put random spawns all over the different islands so that um, yeah you'll be able to spawn in these different locations instead of everybody spawning in the same spot trying to kill each other sounds fair right and since there is water I'm probably not going to get to it in this video because I've never done it before and I don't know how to do it and yeah we'll get it get it working later but one of the things that I have done, and let's go ahead and save all, is while getting set up for all these other things, I have ambient sounds as well. So I want to go ahead and add in an ambient sound to this map. So we have something, we have some noise going on. So again, I'm just going to go to our blueprints, open level blueprint, and on event begin play, I'm just going to... I'm going to add a sequence node in, even though I don't need it right now, I'm just going to do it anyway. So how about that? And then from zero, we're going to play sound at location. And the sound that we're going to play is, I already know what it is, but it's going to be an ambient sound. 
and it's a sound cue. It is a starter background cue that's from that normal asset pack. I'm going to leave the volume at 1 for now. I know the time is actually 10,000 seconds because it's a massive loop. You don't really need the delay, but I'm going to put it in anyway. And I'm going to set the duration to 10,001 seconds. And then I'm going to loop it back. Just for some unknown reason, the loops decide they're going to stop playing. They'll come back at some point. So we can compile and save. Now if we go into the map, we have a little bit of ambient music in the background. Some birds chirping, wind blowing, things like that. We want to get really creative. We could add some sound to the water, but water doesn't seem to be moving all that much. So, anywho, that's that. we got some basic sounds going. Um, that's nice. And we are going to use some gunshot sounds here to when we fire our rifle. Covered our background. Now, I've also gone ahead and brought in some other animations. Now, since we have that um, animation uh, starter pack in here, it does have a crouch feature. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fix that. But I've also brought in, so whenever I do get around to fixing the swimming portion when you go into the water, you have a swimming animation. And what if you're not swimming and you're just hanging out in the water, you're treading water. So I've got those animations in place. And when I start bringing in the sword, I have four different sword attacks. I've got a backhand. I've got a um, pretty quick one. This is what I'm going to use primarily. It's just a quick sword attack. And then I've got a couple more there. So what we need to do is fix the animation for crouching. So I'm going to go into the rifle animation blueprint. And the first thing that I notice is it has a reference to cast to the UE4 ASP character. And we're not using that. There's another reference to it right there. And it's also got a jump. Um, and a different jump and a different um, crouch. So the crouch is already in there. So what we're going to have to do is we need to look at the animation starter pack. And we need to look at the blueprint for that character. Now, their jump system is a little bit different, but for right now, the crouching is the easiest one to work with. You got two variables jump button down and crouch button down. Those will have to be moved over, and that's an easy thing to fix. I can do that quickly, but we need a crouch button. So I'm going to go ahead and run into my project settings and input what shall be the best. And I want to toggle crouching. I don't want to just hold the button down to crouch. I want to hit it and then hit it again to stop crouching. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new one in here and we're going to say crouch and I'm going to say the C key for right now. Now, crouch, input action, crouch. I think I've got that right. So I'm going to hit compile and save. So that that is now working correctly. So I'm going to grab crouching and control C on it. And then I'm going to go into the player blueprints the player underscore base and we need to do some more cleanup in here too but I'm gonna go ahead and control V and add in crouching so this is only part of what we're gonna to have to do to get the crouching to work but we needed that in there now it's gonna give us an error because there is no uh, actual thing yet. So we need to create that variable. What we have to do is right click on the node and create variable crouch button down and there it is. And then hit compile and save and that is now fixed. So 
If we come back to our animation from the animation starter pack, actually we don't need that one, we need the one that we have created, Rifle Animation Blueprint, where we have the references here and here for the, which I'm going to go ahead and replace Jump first. I'm going to right click and cast to player underscore base. We need the as player base to go to jump button down. And it's not going to work. So we're going to have to come back to that one, actually. Let's actually take care of this one. Because it's going to jump and crouch. Yeah, we're going to have to go ahead and address that. Um, the jump button down. Let's take a look at the player base and its jump functions. Jump and jump. So, hmm. Use this jump or use their jump. Because with this whole thing right here, we've got um, a little bit different style of jump. I think we can use this. Yeah, let's go ahead and just copy this and let's go to our player base and I'll be able to find this again. If I ever need to redo it, I can. So let's delete that and paste that one in and this should give us an error. Compile and that's because it doesn't have jump button down so I right click, create the variable, compile and save. Now, we'll come back to the rifle animation blueprint. Again, I did compile and save. And now, from as player base, we can set jump button down. Run that off of there. So, that's going to replace this part right here. Ready? Are you gonna wake up here? Uh, what are you doing? So we need to we got enable jump here. So we need to actually run that tag to this, this tag to here, and that's gonna free us up to get rid of these two. And I'll just drag that up to make it look nice. And then this one, we've got a few more things to adjust the tags on. So I'm going to go ahead and Control C, Control V. So the first one we need to do is come from Try Get Pawn Owner. And we're going to drag that into the object. We need to come off from Set Direction to here. And then, as player base, we need to go to jump button down. And it's not going to work because we need to create these on our own. So we need to jump, get jump button down. And I'm going to line them up the same way. And crouch button down. We need to get that. and set crouching. I believe that that was in there. Um, no, I don't see it there. So, let's see what happens next. Can I link to you? Lovely, and from you, go into should jump and this needs to go to the sequence node 
And now we can grab these guys, delete them, and it is good. So we're going to move my cast two player base. I'm going to move this around just to kind of neaten it up a little bit. All about making blueprints look a little nicer. It's easier to follow through whenever you, you have uh, better conditioning of how your your blueprints are laid out. So let's hit compile and save. I'm going to close all these guys up because I don't need them right now. And let's hit play. So we still have our regular jump and mouse to move around, look around. It's all lovely. Grab our weapon. We can still jump and we have jump animations now. And we can crouch. So I want to make it to where we can toggle our crouch instead of having to hold it down. So we go back into our player character. And for our crouch, we have pressed and released. So what we can do is let's make this a little bit larger. Let's grab our input action crouch. And I'm going to want to break that link. And I'm going to run a flip-flop. And from the flip-flop, whenever I press it once, it's going to set the uh, crouch button down. When I press it again, it's going to turn that feature off. So now, in theory, by hitting the C key, we can crouch and uncrouch. So let's give that a try. And this is all set up based on, we can't do it when we're unarmed, but we can do it from here. So we hit the button once, we're crouching. Hit the button again, and we're not crouching. So that works lovely. So now we need to address sound. We need some sound. Gun is awful damn boring without any music to it or sound to it. So let's clean up a little bit here. Just because I gotta have it clean. Alright, so we need to have some sound to play whenever we we fire our weapon. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a play sound at location. And we're going to add the gunshot sound. And we're going to learn how to type. Play sound at location. And the location that I want to play the sound. And keep in mind, I haven't set up attenuation yet. I want to set up a standard attenuation so that I can select it here. I don't have it available just yet. So, yeah. The sound that I'm going to use, let's go with the shotgun sound. I think that'll sound pretty good with this. And then we know that we need to set the delay. Um, we can't set a delay when we first press the button. So we're going to have to set up a variable system for can shoot. And then what we'll do is at the end of our play sound, which I'm going to go ahead and get our location, all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our projectile spawner so that it's a git. And then from that git, we need to get world a location, set it here, and throw that up to there. So it's going to play from that location. Um, like I said, we'll need to set up the attenuation later on so that if I fire on one, one section of the map, I'm not going to hear you know, somebody else shooting three miles away but this is going to be good enough for now. 
Um, so we're going to end up having to create another branch mode. We've verified that we, we own the rifle before we can actually shoot it. So now we need to verify that we can fire or not. So I'm going to add another variable. Can fire Uh, we'll just call it weapon. So it's going to ask, can we fire our weapon? So what we need to do is add a delay in here. And I think for now, two seconds is a good time, not realistic, but a good time to set between shots because, you know, truly it's a musket and you would have probably in real life you'd have about a 30 to 45 second um, reload time. So it's going to set, now you can fire your weapon. And hmm. we we'll probably want to go ahead and after we spawn one Let's actually put another version in here. Set can fire weapon to false. So now after we fire, it's going to say, no, you can't fire your weapon. Two seconds later, it's going to say, okay, now you can fire your weapon. So I need to grab all of these guys and actually I don't need to grab all of them. I can just grab these two and pull them down and make room. So we need to set a branch and with that branch, yeah, we can put it anywhere in here. I'm gonna put it right here because I'm gonna come off of this branch later. For now, it's just gonna work. But what we can do later on is, and actually we can do that now. If the answer is false, then we want to play sound at location. And I'm actually going to drag this guy back so I can make use of him. Actually, you know. Um, I need both of them. So I'll grab that, put it right there, get the play sound from location. I'm going to borrow that location. Sound that I'm going to use is click two. So if I try to pull the trigger and I'm not able to fire it, it's going to click. It's going to make that click noise. And then it should automatically reset itself. And then when I go, if I wait long enough and then try to fire it again, it should fire. So let's see how bad I screwed that up. See, it's doing nothing that I'm trying to fire right now. So I can't fire. Why can't I fire? Huh. It's playing the click noise. So how bad did I screw that up? Can I fire my weapon? It's going right to no. Hmm. <coughs> so it's just a matter of there's no actually we can do it this way can fire a weapon, set the default value to true, and let's see if that helps. There we go. Alright, so that works. So we got a click sound if we can't fire. and then it just fires if we can. So that's awesome. 
Now, next catastrophe to deal with. Let's go ahead and give these guys a category. I'm going to change this category to weapons. And I'm going to move all of these guys. Oh, really? Now you're going to tell me that I have a, a driver right in the middle of a live stream in video. Really? Okay, so I'm going to move all these guys over here into that category for weapons so that I can do that and keep it clean. So, sp speaking of clean, holy crap, Spackle, that's a lot of stuff. So, I'm going to do, do what I usually do here, and I'm going to right click and collapse nodes. Primary fire. And there we go. We just clean that crap all the way up. And I'm going to move you to right over here with the rest of this stuff. Because this is all weapons related, so we keep it all together. Now, we need some damage. But the first thing we need to do is create a variable. And we're going to call this health. We're going to change this to a float. Instance editable, expose on spawn and we want it to be replicated. Okay, so now that we have that health, we need to go ahead and compile, save, and I want to set my health to 100. I'm going to compile and save again. So, what we're going to have to come up with now is a way of damaging the player. We don't even have a target to work with yet. So, that's something we're going to have to address as well. We're going to have something to shoot at and be able to kill it. But before we get into that, I know, I know, you're ready to just shoot stuff and kill things, aren't we all? So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and set up a player HUD. going to be a temporary until I get some, some cool stuff to, to make one with. So I'm going to go to my widgets folder and I'm going to create a user interface, widget blueprint, call it a player HUD. Hit enter and for right now all we really need is a progress bar. Again we can get more advanced later on and we want to change the color to red. Make sure everything is up here. Why do you still have a pink hue to you? I don't want you to pink. Pink. I want red. I want zero blue. There. So now I'm going to drag this up here. Let's save it in case I want to use that red later. And now we have a red bar. We're going to drag the percentage over. We see that it slides. Now we're going to create a binding for that. And this is super simple. We've already set up the fact that we have health that goes from 0 to 100. So we need to cast to player underscore base. We need to get a reference to the player character. And then we want to get our health. And we want to do a float divided by float. The float we want to divide by is 100. And then we can hook this directly into here, and that is going to accurately show our health. Next thing we need to do is go back to our player one more time, four or five thousand more times. So in our player, we have our event tick. So let's throw in here, event begin play. So when we first begin to play, we need to create a widget. The widget we want to create is the player HUD. And we need to go ahead and get a reference to our 
player controller. And since we have that available there, we need to add to viewport. Now that we have that added to the viewport, we don't need to change anything else for controls or whatnot. We just added that HUD to our viewport. So let's control, uh, compile, save. And there we have our first mistake. Player HUD. Select it. Anchor it to the bottom right hand corner, you dumb ass. Alrighty. So play that again. So we see we have our health on our bottom right hand corner. Awesome. There's nothing to cause us damage. Um, we could also set up a health regen system like we did for the project uh, Paragon. But for now, this will do. Um, once we get uh, ready to start doing some other stuff, we'll actually actually can create the system now instead of procrastinating. In our assets, we want to we got a pickups, and let's go ahead and create a trigger. In our triggers box, we're going to create one called. Um, pain pain pal whatever who cares um, and all we're going to do is add a component of a cube add a component of a box collision and then we're going to scale this to 0 0.2 actually we need to make it 1.5 by 1.5 by 0 0.2 and then we can take our collision box and we can do 1.5 by 1.5 by 10 move it up I think like I've done this a couple times and then we'll scroll down here I always blocks it on component begin overlap create that we'll go here we don't need you guys so now we can go into this and come from the other actor cast to player underscore base and this will work for us for now and then from player base we want to get our health we want to set our health so what we're going to do is we're going to get our health. We are going to float minus float. We're going to take away 10 points. And then that's going to set our health now to where our health was before to minus 10. So compile and save. And just because. Play sound at location. Where are we going to get our location from? Well, we can get our cube and get world location and then chuck it in there. The sound that we want to use is our explosion cue. So, therefore, when we step on it, it's going to make a sound. It's going to go bang. Um, if we wanted to, we could actually add in the spawn emitter at location. And again, we want to use the same location. The emitter we want to use is, so we have some good ones. We have musket fire, cannon fire, smoke, wake, um, or well, we're going to use cannon fire because I don't have the starter pack installed. So, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to shove 700 megabytes worth of crap that I'm not going to use in here. All right. 
right get your ass up there so now we're going to go ahead and throw our pain pal in here just for testing porpoises only so now if we walk over here and step on this we get some effects and it knocks off some health All right, so now we can actually create another pickup that's going to be a health potion. So we'll come into our pickups folder, and I'm going to create a new blueprint, an actor. Um, let's see. Do a minor health potion. We're going to go open that up, then we're going to actually look for what we're going to use here. So we're going to go into our Polygon Pirates and we want to find our meshes folder and go to items. So we've got some bottles here that will work. Gems. Hey, we have a potion. Potion 01. That will do quite lovely. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to go back into this. I'm going to add a component, which is going to be Static Mesh. It's already got it selected, so that's awesome. And now I want to add another component, which is going to be a Box Collision, so that we can actually pick it up. And we're going to move this Collision Box up. We're going to scale it. doesn't need to be as big, but it doesn't need to be tiny. You know what, that's good enough. And I'm actually going to do like I did before and make this kind of a classy thing. Move that up, but move this back down again. And, well, since it's all symmetrical, I'm not going to do it. But if it was a square or any other shape, which, you know what, screw it, I'll do it anyway, that way you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to add another component to the potion and rotating movement, compile, save, and now let's go back to our pickups folder and let's go ahead and throw a couple potions down just again for our testing. So now we'll walk over here and oh no, we got injured. Oh no, we got injured. Oh no, we got injured. Yay! <laughs> I'm sorry, it's stupid human tricks. So we know that they work and we can see that they're rotating. That's awesome. Actually, wouldn't be a bad thing to go ahead and raise it up even more just for purely aesthetics so to make them actually functional we need to come down here first off and turn off collisions no collision character step on no so we're going to compile and save that so there's no collision to it but we want to also go ahead and get our collision box and Component on begin overlap, and again, you guys, I don't need. So we'll come from other actor, cast to player underscore base. Alrighty, and then as player base, and I want to go ahead and grab that sound file again, the one that I use on the other project. because we need something you know, more appropriate for picking up a healing potion. So let's see if I can quickly find that here. But we need to... Let's create a new folder called effects. Put that there. And let me quickly look through here and see if I can find that. I know about where it is. I need to clean up my... Um, I have a separate hard drive just specifically for um, Unreal Engine 4 stuff. And I have terabyte hard drive just for that. 
doesn't take long to get full so I need to clean it out again auto save my ass edit editor um, <laughs> I don't like auto save so we're getting rid of auto save right now so anyway audio I assume that's it yep that's it so that's our blessing kind of moving things around so I can see it here so with our blessing file we go ahead and hit save all save everything here and we keep that selected go back to our minor healing potion and we want to get health and again set health this time we're not going to take it away we're going to add it back so and actually let's do one other thing really quickly let's get a branch and let's find out if our health is less than 100 if our health is less than 100 then we can use and pick up and do things lovely so now we can do that and go ahead and tag this actually I'm gonna get another version of it so health I want to get it didn't really need to get another one but I'm gonna do it anyway health plus sign so we can do float plus float and we want to increase our health by 10 this is a minor healing potion so 10 is good enough and then after we've picked it up we want to get a reference to our potion and then we want to get world location and from that I want to go ahead and you guessed it play sound because we want it to be awesome and blessing so now if we're able to use the health potion then it'll let us pick it up it'll play the sound and then we need to destroy actor so if we can't use it then it doesn't do anything it just stays there and, and hovers in the air but if we can use it then it will disappear so let's go take a look at it oh we can walk right through it and it doesn't do anything so let's take some damage so now when we come over here pick it up and there we go you can spawn an emitter or something like that if you want to as well so we've done that so let's go ahead and skip on over to adding some health regeneration so we've got our minor healing potion it works lovely we've got our pain pal it works lovely and now let's go back to health regen we've got a big old pile of stuff over here so we'll have to clean that up later but we want to go ahead and do a custom event health regen so what it's going to do is when we trigger the health regen we want to go ahead and get a reference to our health we want to do a branch we want to see if our health is less than 100 
actually let's go a different route um, if it's greater than or, e or equal to 100 let's zoom in to make sure you guys can see so if it is less than or greater than 100 we need to go ahead and set it to 100 so it doesn't go over 100 and on the same note with that I'm going to slide it over here just for neatness we want to do the opposite if our health is less than or equal to 0 and let's go ahead and set a branch and we're going to set it over here so it's going to check are you over 100 then do this are you at 0 or below then you're going to do this so it's just kind of making a zigzag pattern right here it'll work and if you are at zero or below then we want to set your health to zero and we're gonna throw in another variable here and we're gonna call this dead we're gonna set you to dead so we'll worry about a respawn system later on we just want to kill you and make it look like it's something so this is just going to do a health check so let's actually rename this to health check so with our health check system right here this is going to be running at all times so let's go ahead and compile and save and we need to put this on our event tick so this is always running it's always gonna be checking to see if you're alive and your stats are within the appropriate range alright so with that we're done with this one we can collapse this down do a healthy check so now that it's checking and maintaining our health at a certain point then we can actually run a health regen so let's do another custom event do health regen so on our health regen we're going to and let's take a look at this yep that's lovely so with our health regen we want to get a branch and with that branch we need to check if our health is less than 100 if our health is less than 100 then we need to start giving us some health back not at a huge rate but so it checks is our health below 100 if yes then we need to hmm, we're gonna have to run a check system on here But let's go ahead and get another copy of our health. And we're going to want to set our health. And we want to float plus float. We're going to add one health to our existing health. 
And now we need to have a delay system in here. So we need it to loop back and just keep checking. So let's go ahead and try with a delay. And we want to set it to three seconds. And we had some problems with this before and I forgot how we fixed it. So I'll figure it out here very shortly. So with that delay, it is going to then circle back over here to our branch again and check to see if we're below 100. Our health regen is going to go ahead and take care of the other part. So I'm going to do a compile and save. And is it possible for me to reconnect these? So if I were to bring this over to here and this over to here, that's going to give me an output node. So it's just going to flow through. Let's see what happens if we then... Honestly, we could just go directly into there, but I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and run a health regen here because that's going to tie in off of the health check over here. So in our health re regen it's going to check and well I'm just going to check to see if it works. Pretty sure I'm going to have to make some changes but alright we took damage and I don't see it going back up. So yeah, that's that's what I, I thought there. So let's go back into here, delete that, go to this, and let's break these two nodes off. Kind of figured they were going to be part of what the problem was. Um, so let's go ahead and do our health regen here off of our event tick and let's see if it works from there so and just like I did before it's not looping correctly I'd have to look to see what I did before to fix that on the other uh, project, but no bueno. We need to figure out why it's constantly doing it. It's checking it right there. It's only set to give you one. So our health regen... Yeah, that's um I think what I did before was actually put it into right here. It shouldn't need to go there, but welcome to Unreal Engine three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, let's see what happens now. All right, so yeah, it is regenerating. It's really, really slow, which is good. You don't want it to be super fast anyway. So we do now have health regeneration. It's a, a slow process, but if you do take damage, then and you can't find anywhere to get a health potion, at least you know that your health is going to regen if you just hide like a coward. Yeah. So now that we have health, and we have health regen, and we have health potions, let's look at these weapons making some damage. 
and again collapse nodes healthy region and that's there so I'm just gonna grab these two guys throw them over here with this other pile of stuff that's gathering so what do we need on primary fire a lot of stuff in here so it's all working it's firing it's making noise um, there's no muzzle flash unfortunately that's going to be something that's going to be difficult to do because it won't work with all weapons the same um, and we don't want it spawning in midair but okay What we need to do is create an overlap event. So I'm going to compile and save, go back to our event graph, and I'm going to close player base for right now. And I'm actually going to go into our weapons, projectile base, and what we have is a bullet. It's big, we know that. Whatever, we're not concerned about the size of it just yet because we're probably going to end up just taking that whole thing away and just making it either tiny or creating another projectile or whatever so we can create a sphere collision so with that sphere collision we need it to be the size of the ball. Let's make it bigger. There we go. So we can see it. You know, we need to have a collision box. It needs to be bigger than the sphere itself. Um, the sphere doesn't have collision. Yes, block all dynamic. That's fine. The collision box now. We need to. Hmm. This is where it's going to be fun because we create this event actor begin overlap and component. So we've got two different ways of doing this. The problem that we're going to run into is we need to identify that it's hitting a specific thing. And if we do on the actor overlap. We'll try it both ways for now just to see what we can come up with and from that well we're gonna have to create a um, either a class or something. We're gonna have to do something different later on because we're just casting to the player base as the only actor and um, get all child actors yeah. this is going to be problematic it's going to be okay for PvP um, so when it overlaps with the actor of player underscore base, which is going to be something we're going to have to fiddle around with. If we try to put player base out, we're going to see all the cameras and stuff. So, yeah. And if we hit play now, okay, we can still see them. Grab our weapon. It's hitting him. And it's going away. So we know that it's colliding with him. So, okay, we can use that as our test dummy for now. That's going to work for what we're doing. 
So we need to go ahead and get our health. We need to set our health. And we're going to go ahead and try this out and see what happens. And we're going to do our health, which is float minus float. And we're going to take away 20 health for getting shot. Again, something to be adjusted later. So we're going to shoot this guy and take away 20 health. So another thing we're going to have to do here is in our player base, we're going to keep piling the stuff in here, and we have a dead variable already. So we need to do something when the player actually dies. Hmm. Now with the NPC that we did in the other project, it was pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and do our death animation. I'm going to retarget it and I'm going to do it to the player base skeleton and yeah I'm just going to change the folder So we at least have one death animation. That should be good now. And if we look at our animation, ugh, he's dead. All right, so we'll save that. And look at our player base. And we're gonna come back over here and do another custom event. At a custom event, call that death, and we are going to get a branch. We're going to check to see if we're dead or not. And if we are dead, if we're not dead, we're not going to do anything. Then we're going to play animation. I don't have an animation montage set up for death yet, so hmm. play animation mesh. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that. New animation to play. We need to find our death animation the correct one and it is a game characters animation and at that point we just want it to do that we want it to play the animation we want to see that it does something we need to again come back over here and add death into our event tick so it's going to be constantly checking to see if we're dead or not. It's probably not the best way to do all this stuff, but we're just trying to make it work for now. And we'll come back and clean up things as we go. That should have been enough shots to kill him. Yeah, he's not dying. Die, you schmuck. Alright, well, we don't... We don't know what we're doing, so... Oh, Lord, stop showing me all of the garbage, you asswipe. So... Death should be working, and it should be underneath our health check. So if our health is zero, then we're dead. 
and this is going to check to see if we are dead and if so we're going to play the animation um, that's off the event tick oil well um, we could probably come back in and run it off of our health check let's try putting it in here just to see what happens actually all we need is that let's get rid of that it's quick and easy to remake if we need to um, under health check if we are dead then play animation the mesh animation we want to play is going to be our death animation all right and I'm probably not doing something correct in this and casting the player base I'm removing 20 health and I may end up having to put it down here although it is overlapping but I'm going to break these two links we're going to test it off of this one as well so we're not working smart here we're testing multiple things in different ways all right so we hit our target hit our target Well, that was more than enough shots to uh, kill him. And him are not dying. So, so we look at our player base. In theory, that should work. It's, we are dead, so at that point, you're going to play that animation. Um, the projectile... I'm just going to jack the, the damage up to 100. So it's casting to our player. It is not replicated. Default scene should be. The sphere should be following under the default scene route, so it should be okay. Yeah, so that should be good to go. So that one shot should have killed our, our player. So, I guess the, the, the thing is, it's not recognizing that. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and just dump him off the map. What I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to have to package this and test it with somebody. So, what I'm going to do right now is, since this should be in a playable form and format, I am going to show a basic way of packaging and now I'm going to grab all these guys I'm going to put them in the pickups I'm going to close out these two guys I'm going to do a save all and actually let's throw some player starts out here on the map in other locations 
I'm actually going to throw one here. And what the heck, I'll throw one on this ship. I'm going to throw about a dozen player starts out. And I'm going to set for rotation so I can just do that. And of course, you have to be in the wrong spot. Jerkweed. So we'll come over here and put a spawn on this island. Then I'm just going to put some random spawns out here and there just to... And bad size again. Why do you do this to me? Why do you hate me Unreal Engine 4? I'm actually going to put two or three spawns in over here. So we're going to put one right here. Alrighty then. I'll put one in over here. And one back, one over here. Put a couple more in. That's um, seven starts already. Actually, eight if you consider that one is going to be listed as zero. So we're going to put a player start here. And yes, at some point I am going to go ahead and make the cannons work. So you can sit there from one island to the next or one ship to the next and do some cannon fire. Turn each other into cannon fodder. And cannonballs will do damage, you know, hopefully, as soon as I get the rest of this finished. Um, but with what I'm doing right now, placing the spawns out, I'm going to go ahead and package this. I'm actually going to throw another spawn in. Right here on this ship, whatever. And that'll be, well, there's already 10 starts. So that's good enough for now. Got 10 player starts spread all over the map. I'm going to save all. And I need to make sure that edit project settings. And we want to have a description. Looter shooter. I don't have a thumbnail yet. And company name is Beeflo Bart Gaming. Lovely. Project name is Pirates. Let's see, Polly Pirate Adventure. Whatever. Um, so that's not what I want to look at. I want to look at packaging. So we're going to do this for development packaging. We want to do full rebuild. We don't want for distribution. We want to come in here for packaging. And we want to look under list of maps to include in packaging build. I want to open that up. We don't want the lobby map anymore because we're not going to use it for right now. So we're going to include the demonstration map. So what I need to do is find the location of my Unreal projects and content. Send to Polygon Pirates, Maps, and Demonstration. So now it's going to include just that map and the main menu map. It's not going to include a bunch of extra stuff that we don't need. And I have a second one that we don't need. So we just have those two maps. And it's going to save those in the packaging. And it's not going to package any other maps that it may find. So it's going to reduce a little bit of the file size. 
supported platforms no we don't care about all platforms we only care about one not a critical thing right here but okay we're packaging it for windows I guess I could if I wanted to package it for the rest but yeah I'm not really worried about it um, optimize project settings for a desktop and, and consoles that's fine um, that should be all that I need for now so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I am going to select file package product come down to Windows 64-bit so if anybody is watching this and want to play it and you've got 32-bit sorry but I'm gonna go ahead and package it for Windows 64-bit I'm gonna come over here and find the location where I want to store it I'm gonna put this on my storage drive and I'm gonna create a new folder called polypirate and I'm gonna save it right here so this is gonna take a while and while it's doing that I'm gonna go ahead and shut down this uh, live stream because we're close to the hour and a half mark um, damage is unconfirmed as to working or not and yeah I only put one rifle in, in the entire map but I just want to get a quick test and see what's going on in fact actually let's cancel that build and just so that um, we can go to this player start over here let's go ahead and add in because it makes sense to let everybody have uh, a weapon so we'll just go ahead and nope that is the wrong one we want the pickup version so we'll throw a rifle in right here and go to player start three let's throw a rifle in right here let's go to four so everybody will have a rifle you know it just makes sense so let's go to player start five I am actually gonna throw it down here and six I don't know how I'm zipping back and forth to these different locations if I want to go to seven now hit the F key on the keyboard and it focuses on that location so we're there at seven let's go to eight throw a rifle down let's go to nine a good thing I did come over here because that one would have been bad and would have gave me an error and I would have had a packaging problem so we'll throw the rifle in right here so now all of our player starts have a weapon and we'll throw those into pickups not worried about the health pickups because you know we just want, want to do a quick test to see what kind of replication issues we're, we're facing so we'll see if it actually works and we'll go from there so now we're going to go back over here and I'm going to double check to make sure that that folder is empty okay that folder is empty so I'm gonna go ahead and file package project Windows Windows 64 and I'm gonna go ahead and let it do its thing it's automatically saving there so good to go and I'm going to call it quits on this video and whenever I get done packaging this project I will upload it to Google Drive and when the upload is complete I will post a link in my discord channel in the public lobby for anybody to download and check out to see what we've got here so far and if things work we can test it out and go from there and 
once we get the damage actually working correctly and so forth, then, yeah, what the heck, we're going to go ahead and keep working until we get some more things done, make a character selection, we'll get the swords working, we'll get the swimming working, and my goal is to get the cannons working as well, and to also get the ships and boats working. So, one step at a time, what, we're, we're not even into the, we're barely at three hours time to get a game that's actually playable for people to run around and have fun with, so... Stay tuned. Probably not going to do another broadcast tonight. That's um, three uh, hour and a half long broadcast, and plus several videos earlier this morning. So yeah, I'm actually going to play a game instead of just making one. So check back, check in my um, my public lobby and my Discord, and you should see a link to download and play the demo of what we've got so far. All right, thanks guys, and we'll see you soon.